Chapter 4 The House of the Jade Clovers Upon reaching the classroom, Professor Alvin stood in front of a green iron door that had a four-leaf clover, put his hand on the handle, turned a wheel, which contained numbers from 0 to 9. In addition to turning a second wheel that contained the letters of the alphabet, and formed the word GNDC12, that is the password to enter, dear students, said the teacher. They entered and the walls were painted emerald green. The curtains were green, it had some paintings with photos of the founders of the school, lockers for correspondence and storing books. Cedar wood desks, where you could see some names of students from other times, written with graphite, paint, or carved with a kind of knife, in addition to the chewing gum stuck between the wood. The teacher's main desk in front of the blackboard, a statue of the god Eshin on one of its walls, another section where the tables were in the shape of a round table, and a table with some armchairs and in the corner, a corner, where the teacher had indicated that during the festive times of the year, they could decorate that place. At that, when everyone was gathered in the center of the hall, Professor Alvin gave them the instruction that, to get here, they should follow one of the corridors to the hall of the House of Jade Clovers which was located in the third level, down and at the back of the school arriving through the main right hallway. When everyone sat in their places, Gavin and Roger looked happy about being classmates throughout their stay at school. After a few minutes, Professor Alvin gives his first talk. Welcome dear students to the House of Jade Clovers. It is a pleasure to have you here. Feel comfortable and I hope to be able to help you in everything you need as your guide and tutor. Before teacher lady arrives, so she can show you the class schedules, I will give each of you what corresponds to your clothes for school, said the teacher as he took out a box from a door in one of the walls. The rest of the room was waiting for what Professor Alvin was still talking about. I want you to come forward and take your uniforms from this box. The clothing is as follows, said the teacher as he took a black vest out of the box and then, he took a crayon and began to exemplify the parts on the blackboard, of school dress. They must wear black shoes, whether boots, tennis shoes, sneakers, whatever they like, but they must be totally black, long black pants, girls can wear a skirt or pants. And finally we come to what the t-shirt or blouse is, which is white, and here comes a very important fact, the vest is ordinary, it has long sleeves and a hat for winter or cold days. It has the shield on the chest, for first years, their vest will have a trim on sky blue for boys and pink for girls, for regular students the vest has white trim for both genders. These will be given next year and for seniors, the clothing includes a tie, the tie will be color of the house to which you belong, in your case it will be green. And the trim on the vest will be beige. Does anyone have any questions? Argued the professor, at that, a thin girl, with long straight. Black hair, with glasses, raises her hand, to which the professor. Alvin answers, yes? Tefa Gibson, right? Yes sir, my question is. How will we differentiate ourselves from those of the other houses? What would be our badge on the uniform? Because I only see that until the last year we will wear the tie, asked Tefa Gibson. The answer is in that box, Miss Gibson, these are pins, you must place them on your vests, these pins have the emblem of your respective house, you must wear them, said the professor. Excellent professor, thank you very much, exclaimed Tefa, well, does anyone have any other questions? No? Nobody? asked the teacher. The room was silent. To which a voice was heard outside the room that said, you're probably still nervous because it's the first day, and a tall woman with long brown hair and brown eyes made her entrance. Honey and crimson lips. Good morning Professor Lady Arden, I was just going to move on to your part. Young people, this is the teacher Lady Arden. She is the tutor for the first-year students of the houses in general and she will give you information about the lessons, said Professor Alvin as he walked towards the teacher at the classroom. Door. Thank you Professor Alvin. Good morning guys, 
said teacher lady, wow, what a pretty woman, said Roger. Next I will show you what the class schedule is for the young people of the house of Jade Clovers, you must attend the courses, if you miss. You will lose points in your final grade and I am afraid that you will not be able to advance to the following years, be orderly, look at your watch carefully, so that you avoid arriving late. If you do not have a watch, you can observe the one we have in the central tower of the school that can be seen from anywhere and rings the bells at time changes, said the teacher. While the rest of the students at their desks took out their notebooks to begin writing down their lesson schedules, teacher lady continued with the schedule. On Mondays they will have art and crafting lessons, which is a class where they can create outfits, synthesize objects, customize objects and cook. The classes are taught in the workshop which is in front of the stadium. Fudblase, and following that, dual and Fudblase lessons, in the Fudblase arena of course. On Tuesday they will have statistics, in this same room, to learn about the damage numbers that a magical attack can cause, a physical attack, an attack with a weapon, and the restoration numbers that can help thanks to a medicine or potion in a recovery from an attack, and in the afternoon they will have alchemy that is taught in the laboratory, which is in the front of this room, down the main corridor, in alchemy they will learn to make potions, antidotes and that kind of thing. For Wednesday, you will have mapping and geography lessons. There you will study more about the map of the town, its regions, and to get ahead of myself with Professor Darrell, I will give you a map of the school because you are a first year. That class will be taught in the library, Madam Layla, the librarian, is waiting for you there that day with Professor Darrell. On Thursday you will have summoning classes. You must go to the chapel that is in the green forest, crossing the river and the bridge, it is a long trip so try to start walking early. There you will learn everything about summoning creatures spiritual, in a practical and theoretical way and finally, on Friday. Music lessons for those who indicated on their admission sheet that they know how to use musical instruments, Professor Arnold will wait for them in the musical room next to the gym. That's all for now, does anyone have any questions? Concluded the teacher lady, who sees the group again and everyone seems very nervous and gave a map to each one of the school. Gavin. Roger and the other classmates were very interested in this since the first thing they wanted to do during recess was to go explore all the fields of the school. Well, I'm going to explain the map very well. First we have the main entrance where the train station is, and in front of you, as you saw in the morning, is the Great Hall. When you leave there are the two main hallways, the main right hallway it takes us to the rooms of the other houses, rooms where you should not enter because you do not belong to those houses, in addition to the fact that each house has a different password on its doors, the teacher's room where access is also prohibited for students. Following that, we have the alchemy laboratory and thus we arrive at the bridge path, which crosses the river to enter the green forest where the chapel, the grotto, the great saku tree and the well that connects with the catacombs are located argued the teacher lady, ooh catacombs, how scary, someone whispered at the back of the room, Gavin. I heard that in the catacombs a demon hides that appears at night, a creature that a few years ago, murdered a janitor. Who was cleaning near the workshop, said Roger, that sounds creepy ha ha. But if one day we come at night, we should go investigate that, Gavin told Roger as he told him that it would be an adventure full of adrenaline, silence young people, please, as I said. The Great Lake and finally, leaving the Bosque Verde, we already find the Fudblesse Stadium, where the school's Fudblesse Cup matches are held in the month of August. So we connect with the second main hall, which contains more rooms from other houses, as you know, the Jade Clover's room is here, in front of the Alchemy Laboratory. The House of Scarlet Eagle's room is in front of the staff room, the House of Black Knight's room is next to the library. The Hall of the Golden Canaries is in the tower behind the clock in front of the plaza, 
the hall of the house of the violet gems is in the hallway leading to the cafeteria. The house of the sapphire falcons is just a few meters behind the laboratory of alchemy on the steps that lead to the gym. The room of the house of the pearl lions is below the steps that lead to the library. In an underground floor next to the old cellar and finally the room of the house of the bronze bees is next to the Fudblaze Stadium, there are many secret passages in this school, which are all referenced by the security guards that you will see in different parts of the school in your free time. So do not try to be sneaky if you find yourself there getting into trouble because they will have even more problems, and finally, the library, the gym. The plaza in front of the clock tower with its weather vane, where the seniors' lounge is, the men's and women's bathrooms, the cafeteria, the infirmary and the play area to what would be the northeast of the tower, that would be the explanation of the map. I hope that it has been clear to everyone and that no one gets lost on the way to classes, with this I leave, I hope that have a good day and many successes. May Eshin be with you, argued teacher lady, while telling the rest of the room that Professor Silvana had a message for them. Teacher lady left the room and Professor Silvana made her entrance. Dot. Good job lady, I think everyone is clear about the instructions. Young people, before you leave for your lessons this day, I want to give you something very important, said Professor Silvana as she looked at Gavin and Roger with a penetrating look while she gave the message. Before this, Gavin felt uncomfortable and he whispered in Roger's ear, as soon as we have some free time, I have to tell you something, to which Roger replied, okay, friend, 